Right before we jump into this video, if you'd like me to send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations, just look for this orange box over on the website, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, and I will send you that guide for free. Jared Poland, Frono's photo. Dot com, and this is an updated lock on tracking and IAF test between Canon, Sony, and Nikon. Now, we originally did a test similar to this in May of 2019 when Nikon came out with the updated firmware for the Z6 that did better tracking and also IAF. So, we wanted to test it out to see which camera did the best between the three of them, and by far, Sony was more superior at that time in May 2019 than Canon as well as Nikon. Well, here we are in August. Is it August? August, right? Yeah, August of 2020, now that the Canon EOS R5 is out and that Nikon has updated the firmware to beyond 3.0 in their Z6 and Z7, it was time to do one of these tests again. This time around, we use the Canon EOS R5, the Sony A7R4, as well as the Z7. They are all the highest megapixel cameras that they offer with the latest firmware all updated. And we set everything to the default autofocus modes without any tweaking just to see how they did right out of the box. So what lenses did we use? Well, we used the 85 native lenses for all three. 85-1.2 RF on the Canon, 85-1.4 G Master on the Sony, and Nikon's 85 is a 1.8. Now on top of each camera, we used an Atomos to record the overlay so that you could see exactly what you would see if you were looking through the electronic viewfinder. Now this is set for taking stills. It's not set in the video modes. But also, we don't just show you the overlay working because at the very end of this video, we go over a bunch of clips where we hold down the shutter button with all three cameras to show you what the shutter lag looks like, as well as see how many hit and how many miss in terms of autofocus when it comes to taking stills. So right before I jump into the sample clips, you will always see the Canon on the left, the Sony in the middle, and the Nikon on the right. The settings are going to be exactly the same across the board. We set the same shutter speed, ISO, as well as aperture. We went to 1.8 because well, one's a 1.8, one one's a 1.4, and one's a 1.2. The only way to keep it fair and even using the native lenses is to set them all to 1.8. We also have picture styles zeroed out. Now, I say zeroed out, but I'll tell you that the Nikon colors look the best, even though it's all zeroed out. Now, let's run the first clip. So here we go. We got our model Nina. She is skipping, and you can see that well, the Nikon doesn't get the eye as close as the other ones. So Nikon, you have to be much closer for that camera to find the eye. The Canon seems to find the eye at the furthest distance compared to Sony, which is a little bit closer, but you can see that Nikon has done a much better job than where it was a year and a half ago because it actually tracks the subject a little better. Now, what you're seeing on the screen is the overlay. So that's the computer overlay, and the only way to really determine did the picture, did the focus hit, is to show you the pictures, which we're gonna do in tests later on, but this is just to show you how it is tracking, where it acquires it, what size is the eye box around the eye. And so far, I think the Canon and Sony have done a nice job and Nikon is still lagging a little further behind. All right, let's go ahead and continue the clip. So Nina, go ahead, she leaves the frame, she pops back into the frame. You can see that they find the background when she's out, but then find her once again. So they all do a really good job with her spinning and moving around. So, so far, pretty good on all of them. Now, I did mention Nina. She is the model that we used here. Her Instagram is up on the screen if you'd like to go ahead and follow her. And if you wanna check out our review that we did with the 85 1.4 art lens, which is the DN from Sigma. She was our model in that one as well. Here we go, let's run the second clip. More spinnies, pretty close to the camera. Sony looks to be locked on really well in this, uh, and the Canon's bouncing around from eye to eye, but it does find the eye. The, the, the Nikon finds the eye as well, but there you go. It loses it as soon as she covers her eyes, um, and, and the Sony's and the Canon's do a pretty nice job with her spinning. 
Now, let me point something out for you right now, too. On the Sony front, you can see that there is a red box that's active. Now, that is a focus box that I can move with the joystick that I always leave there just in case I need to, what I call, juice the system to help tell the autofocus where to be if it ever loses it beyond you know, finding it again, I, I can move it to the face and say, look right here, look right there, look right there. But you didn't need it here. You could see that it picked it up all the time. Now the R5 has the same option. We just don't have that active here. So in this case, they're all working very similarly. All right, next clip. Spinnies walking towards the camera, hopping. I mean, this, this is so much better than where these cameras originated. Well, I can say better than where Canon and Nikon originated because Sony's been really good for way longer than Nikon and Canon. But at this point, I can tell you from using the R5 and using the Sony's for a while now is that the Canon has caught up to where Sony is. I didn't expect to see that so soon. I didn't expect to see that the R5 would come out and then all of a sudden you're like scratching your head, you know, through all your hair going, huh? Is the Canon better than the, than the Sony autofocus or is it on par? And that is an interesting thing because we saw it in the 1DX Mark III review that we did. When we flipped it into the mirrorless mode, we're like, oh snap, this is pretty darn good. The A92 still had a slight edge over the 1DX Mark III at that time, but now with this R5, it's very similar. Uh, I, I mean, but to, and, and what I'm looking for when it comes to IAF and lock on tracking is, Am I going to miss shots that I otherwise would have gotten if it wasn't there? And the answer at this point is I can pretty much rely on the R5's autofocus. I can absolutely rely on the lock on tracking of the Sony and the Nikon on the other hand is something that I can't exactly rely on fully in full automatic as my voice cracks. Let me jump in here real quick to show you FroPak 2 in action with multiple presets on one image. Let's start with ACDC and that's what you get, followed by Charmin, boom, Cinnamon Toast Crunch, double stuffed Oreos, Golden Grams, and then we come down here to Matte Black. But check this out, there's like three different versions of Matte Black that you can play with, whether it's high contrast or low contrast. We created 15 all new custom Lightroom presets that will help you speed up your raw workflow or give you a great starting point. Head on over to fronosphoto.com slash fropack2 because over there you can play with the sliders to see the befores and the afters. And if you decide to pick them up right now, they're currently on sale. Or if you pick up Fropack 1 and Fropack 2 as the Fropack bundle, you can save even more. Now, let's get back to the video. You know what's interesting? Let, let's run a clip from 2019, May 2019. This is the first clip that we showed. Look how much slower our model Allison was moving in this one. She's just walking so slow and we're all like, wow, look at that, it's working. And now look at it like a year and a half later, it's insane how much further it has come. And that's why we had our model move faster. And then you're gonna see our second model, who's really hot by the way, move even faster on a scooter and use some awesome dance moves and run. So stay tuned for that guy. I mean, hot per, me. all right, it's me, whatever. Let's move on to the next clip. Here we go. Skippity doo, skippity doo, playing with the hair. I'll just let it, I'll let you see it. That was the close focus, it, lose, it lost her, but then she stepped back in and it found her once again. Pop off to the left, pop off to the right. And that's that's the other thing is we noticed that with the Canon, that if the subject, Nina in this case, was all the way off to the left side of the frame, like on the furthest edge, that it still found her over there. That's because you have 100% coverage of the viewfinder with focusing points. With the Sony, you're at like 92%, and with the, with the Nikon, I think you're in the 80 something percent. Uh, if I'm correct. But the point I'm making there is that even at the furthest edge of the frame, the IAF and lock on tracking is still working. So you wanna know something that's interesting? The Canon, even though it's at 1.8, looks like it's obliterating the background more than the Sony and the Nikon. Now it is a 1.2 lens, but it is set to 1.8. So are you getting a different preview than what you end up getting in the photo? Or is it just, 
the way it is. It just shows like it's blowing out the background even more. The cameras for all intent and purposes are lined up as evenly as possible as we could get them. So it's just interesting that that one looks like it blew out the background even more. All right, now here's the super duper hot model by the name of Jared, who's gonna get on a scooter and move it 18 miles an hour. Picks up the eye, picks up the eye, stops right in front of there, we're good. Let's roll that clip back again. Hit play and watch it play out. Boom. So it looked like that the Canon found it quicker than the Sony, but once they acquire, they keep it all the way to the end, and then when you stop right in front of the camera, they all do a pretty good job. Nikon, as we know, I don't wanna just keep beating up Nikon. It does an okay job, and now would be a good time for me to tell you this, is that when we originally tested the Z6 with 1.0 firmware, the original, in the Everglades, in Florida, shooting birds with the uh, 500F 5.6, all adapted glass, I was getting very good focus when I was tracking the subject. That was the first time I ever used that camera and I was getting stuff in focus. So when I talk about the Nikon and say it's not as good as the Canon or the Sony in terms of tracking, I'm not telling you that the camera sucks because I love the quality of that camera. I love the tones, I love the colors, I love the sharpness. I just don't think that the tracking, no, I know for a fact that the tracking just doesn't keep up as well as the Sony and the Canon. It doesn't mean that it's not a good camera and that you should throw it out or jump to another system. Okay, here on this next clip, I go ziggy zaggy and go a little slower this time. Oh, it doesn't look like I went slower. It looks like I went pretty fast. But it's, it, I mean, what else can I say about this, guys? You're seeing it in action. You're seeing it lock on to the eye. You're seeing it track me as I'm moving closer, even going fast. So really good job on all fronts at this point. So the next clip you're gonna see, I'm just gonna let this one roll out. It's me running and zigzagging. Let's play it, here we go. Pretty cool, right? Zigzagging, picks up the eye, follows me as I jump in and out of frames, go backwards. You'll notice that the Canon reverts back to like head AF if it turns to the back of my head, whereas the, the, the Sony doesn't do that as well, but it picks you up so fast. You also may notice that the overlay on the Nikon side is a little slower. Now, you'll see in the photos why, why it's a little slower and if it actually affects the focus hit rate. But when it comes to video, if you were to switch into video mode and do these video modes, you probably wouldn't notice a couple of frames here and there that it ends up missing because it does, they all do a very good job tracking. Let me cut in here real quick and let you know that this video is brought to you by Squarespace. If you're looking to build your very own online photo portfolio, use what I use for jaredpolen.com and get a 14 day free trial when you head on over to squarespace.com slash Fronos Photo. If you decide that it's for you, use the code Fronos Photo at checkout to get 10% off your first order. Now, let's get back to the video. So this next clip is pretty intense with me jumping around, dancing, moving. I mean, I am moving really fast. I am like the fastest man in the world in this clip. Just, just watch how the focusing points track and bounce around as I bounce around. And I'm not a normal subject. I'm a guy with this amount of hair and like massive arms and just a big butt. So let's see how it does. For the next clip, I try to throw off the systems by putting my hands in front of my face, so check this out.
So as you can see right there, sometimes they stayed on the eye, other times they moved to the hands, other time they jumped around, but they all did a fairly good job with this. And this is also something you could tweak in the, the, the autofocusing settings. You can go in there and say, do you want it to stay on the subject longer? Do you want it to have a distraction get the focus if something crosses in front? So there's a lot of different things and scenarios that you can set inside of the cameras, especially inside of the EOS R5. There's a lot of different cases. I personally generally leave it to the default and just shoot from there and tend not to have much of a problem when doing so. In this day and age with a lot of people wearing masks and it being mandated in a lot of places, how does IAF do with the mask on? Being that, look, check this out. I got a pretty big mask on right here. Uh, and you can see that the Sony finds the eye really well, but then when I'm twisting my head, it bounces back to the full face. The Canon goes from full face to the full trying to find the focus to sneaking back into the eye. And, I, and the Nikon actually does a pretty good job from time to time finding the eye before going back to the face detect. But, you know, if you're doing photos with people with masks, the IAF is gonna come in handy as long as it doesn't try to use the mask as what it's focusing on. So now for what I think is the most important part of the video is actually taking pictures and seeing, did it hit? or did it miss with the lock-on tracking and the IAF? And also take a look at the viewfinder blackout. That's what people want to know, is does it black out? And is the Canon terrible like the EOS R? Well, let's take a look at the first clip. First things first, which did you like? Did you like the Canon, the Sony, or the Nikon in terms of blackout? I will tell you that with the, with the Canon, you don't get any blackout, but what they are doing in there is they're putting up the picture that you just took for a fraction of a second. Now, I do also want to mention that we were in high mode in all of these cameras, not in high plus, which is up to 20 frames or 10 or 12, uh, and it's really slow in the Nikon in high mode anyway. It's like five or six, and it's about eight in the, in the Sony, and it's roughly eight or so in the Canon as well. But I'm not distracted by the perceivable lack of a blackout in the Canon. It is so much better than when the R came out and only did three to five frames a second, and that was herky-jerky because they left the delay on there much longer. In this case, when you're doing eight to 10 frames a second or sometimes 12 in the higher mode, you it doesn't interfere with your ability to track the subject. The Sony is taking a lot of photos and you see the blackout, but that doesn't bother me either because I'm so used to shooting it that way. And the Nikon, I think the blackout is almost not even there because it doesn't shoot that many photos, but it's actually there. So as you see, they all did a very good job, except for when I overshot my mark and they all missed focus. And even when I stepped back into the frame, they didn't reacquire on this particular one. Before we jump into the next clip, I do wanna let you know, I'm going to upload the JPEG exports from this. I'm not gonna give you the raw files this time, but just straight up JPEG exports so that you can look at the sequence to see how many hit, how many didn't, how how many did it miss before it reacquired? But now let's show you another clip where this time I didn't overrun my mark. So what I've noticed with the Canons and the Sonys is that if you're taking a ton of pictures, which I generally don't hold the shutter button down for two full seconds when I'm shooting, but when we're testing, we try this out, it will hit, 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 like seven, eight in a row, and then maybe you get one or two where it shifts, or maybe you hit 10 in a row out of 20, and then it shifts for like a fraction of a second and two shots or three shots may be out, but then it comes back in. You gotta think about how much data and how much computational power and information is going through these cameras at this point to track a subject, to track an eye, to track a face, to shoot 10 or eight to 10 to 12 frames a second. All of this is happening and we're getting pictures that are in focus. So of course, sometimes it's going to shift, but then it shifts right back. On the Nikon side, it's definitely hit or miss, verging on 
possibly missing more. But it, it's still fine. It all depends on what you're shooting. Now, I did use a Z7 when it first came out to shoot soccer. That's with the original autofocus. And I got some really good shots. Did I miss some things that I think that the focus system should have gotten and done better at? Yes. Will the updated system do better at shooting those sports and that action? Yes, it definitely will. Let me cut in here and ask you, have you downloaded my Gear Vault yet? Well, if not, it is a free app that I created that's the best way to input, organize, and protect all of your gear so you know what you have and what it's worth. So go ahead and download it for free for iOS and Android right now. Uh, and for the last clip that we're gonna show you, we switched off to the native 24 to 70 2.8 because that is pretty much the only name. We wanted to use the 70 to 200, but Nikon still hasn't put that out. That's due out theoretically at the end of August. But in this case, 24 to 70 2.8 native lenses. Let's run the clip. So pretty much they're similar results, but you'll notice with the Nikon, it used the hunty hunty boxes. The red boxes were up there because I was at a distance and it doesn't acquire that until I'm much closer. The Canon, the Sony, we already know what they're doing because you can see it in action. A reminder, download those photos. You can check out how many hits and misses you got because my job here is to show you this in action working. We showed you the overlay. We showed you the overlay working while taking pictures, while getting that blackout so you could see what it looks like. These cameras have come a long, long way. It's very interesting to see now that Canon has caught up to Sony. It is very, very similar, where it wasn't like that in May 2019. It just was not. At this point, Nikon is lagging so much further behind than the other guys, it's not even funny. It's just slower, but again, that doesn't mean I don't like the camera. I do like the camera. But at the end of the day, I can rely on the Canon, I can rely on the Sony to take over so I can just focus on composition and my exposure and getting the proper shot. So let me know what you guys think down below. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And that's where I'm gonna leave it. Jared Polinfronosphoto.com. See ya.